Okay, now we've moved over to our, uh, we've put our SD card that we just formatted, installed OctoPy on. Uh, we put that into our Raspberry Pi 3. And now it is time to go ahead and uh, start configuring this. Uh, you need to find your IP address for your Raspberry Pi if you're running, oh, uh, what doesn't matter what you're running, you need your, your uh, IP address. Mine happens to be 242. You type it in up here, 192.168.1.242. Um, you can also go ahead and hit, uh, type in a name here. Clipper Video. Hit save. I'm just saving over that one. That way, it's already there for me. Um, it's gonna it's gonna come up with a alert the very the very first time saying that the current key uh, is unsigned. Yada yada. You're gonna say yes, I I trust it, and then you'll be treated you'll be grant, greeted with this nice little login. Uh, you will log in as Pi, and the default password is all lowercase Raspian. R A S P B A I N. No, I'm sorry. It's Raspberry. R A S P B E R R Y. All right. We have. We are now at a command prompt. Uh, and as you can see right here, SSH is enabled by default. But the Pi user, uh, <clears throat> the default password for the Pi user has not been changed. Uh, please type in password to set a new password. Um, one nice thing about PuTTY is you can highlight something with the left mouse, let go, right click, and it will automatically paste it for you. So let's go ahead and change our password. Type in Raspberry. And then type in the new password you want to make it. That helps if you get it right. There we go. And then the new password. I like to leave, I just leave the, the default user as Pi. Um, since we're here real quick, I wanna go cover a few Linux commands. Uh, these will help you out immensely. Uh, uh, the first one is list, ls. It's gonna, it's gonna list the files and directories that are currently available. Um, LSL turns it into an actual list and LSLH makes it human readable so it changes it goes from bytes to kilobytes megabytes and gigabytes I think it goes gigabytes anyway um, something else is your manual pages or man pages so uh, you just type in man and then the command that you want to learn about so we're using LS which is list directory contents and then in here, you can use the up and down arrows. You can use the page up, page down. And you can see all the various uh, command line options there are for this command. Okay. To get out of here, it tells you on the bottom, you just hit Q. Uh, a command that people, a lot of people don't know about is um, the move command, which is MV. Uh, you, this is actually how you rename files. So a lot of people... Uh, especially new to Linux, uh, just don't understand how the move command works. So go ahead and do some reading up on it. Um, there's some other commands like we're going to use git, man git. Well, there is a plethora of options for git. All right, we're not going to go through all of them. But what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and install Clipper. Before we install Clipper, how about we update our Raspberry Pi? Now, I am not going to update my Pi, but I'm going to show you how we do that. So, uh, right now, we're, we are at an unprivileged command prompt, uh, very noticeable by the plus sign. I'm sorry, the plus sign, the dollar sign here. Um, if we were on a privileged uh, login, it would be a hashtag. So, we need to do a privileged user. Uh, our ri riser privileges through sudo, uh, sudo. We're going to use apt-get. 
So apt git. One nice thing about uh, bash, which I believe is the the default here, uh, our, our default shell is it has autocomplete for a lot of commands, and you just type in tab. So all I did was apt hyphen, and I started the G, and I tabbed it, and it auto-filled it in for me. So we're going to do apt get update. And it's going to ask for our password because we are elevating our privileges. Now it's going to go ahead and it is going to update all the repository information. What, what it's doing is it's basically building a list of all the latest packages and uh, what uh, the version numbers of everything. If you want to update, you do a sudo apt git. We don't need to use the git actually. Um, apt is a shortcut for apt git. Uh, so sudo apt upgrade. Now it's going to tell us there's like 114 packages that can be upgraded. It's going to take uh, roughly 2 megabytes of additional space and this will take quite a bit of time. So we are not going to go ahead and do this. But I highly recommend that everyone do this uh, right out the gate. It, it is very beneficial. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shrink this screen down a little bit because it's a little big. Because now we're going to do a few different things here. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit taller and a little bit smaller. There we go. We're going to go ahead and install Clipper. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to bring up Clipper. We're at the the Clipper GitHub. We're at the Clipper GitHub right now, and I'm gonna kind of show you guys a little bit of things that a lot of people seem to neglect, and that is, where are, is all the documentation for Clipper? Well, it's in several different areas. Um, this is the main landing page for Clipper. Um, inside this doc folder is obviously a lot of documents. Uh, the main ones that people really need to read are installation, which is right here. G codes to see all the supported G codes and the extended G codes, the FAQ, right, and then of course um, debugging because uh, inevitably you guys, uh, a lot of people are going to have to debug something and, and figure out how to do that. So there's a lot of other documents in here uh, that you could look over. And I would highly recommend you read most of them. Uh, other places to look for information is in the config folder. These are all a bunch of figs, but the big thing here is the example config and then the example extras config. So inside here, all the various parts of the configuration are gone over and talked about. Okay? So I'm not going to go over all of this. I just want I just want you all to know that that is indeed an option. We're going to go back. Oops. Went back too far. And what I do want to do is I want to go to install because we're going to follow the directions here on installing an image. We've already covered uh installing the OS image. Now we're going to go ahead and clone Clipper into our uh, Raspberry Pi here. So I highlighted it, I copied it, and then I right click, and now we're installing it. And the next thing after this is we need to run the install script. Same thing. This only takes uh, about a minute to install Clipper. While we're doing this, uh, I'm going to let you guys know I do happen to have two ramps currently attached to my uh, Raspberry Pi. And we're going to go ahead and flash both of those ramps. Uh, I say ramps. It's a generic term. I have two megas, two 2560s, or is it 2650? Well, anyway, I have two mega 
two megas installed, each with a RAMS 1.4 on top of them. Uh, so what I want to do here is I want to go back to Clipper and I want to go into the docs directory and I'm going to go to the FAQ and inside the FAQ right at the very top right here where is my serial port okay this comes in handy when we want to actually uh, flash uh, and also put our IDs into our configuration so the first thing we will do is this right here uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a list and we're actually because everything in Linux is basically a file and we're gonna look for the files for our USB devices looks like it might take a few minutes I haven't actually installed Clipper into a very fresh install of Octopi in a while so uh, we're just gonna give this a minute we'll just open up a new putty because this will be faster uh, and as I do that, it's just about finished now. All right. Oop. I didn't hit. I didn't hit save. I'll copy this command here. I'll t paste it in there. Make the screen a little bit bigger so you can. So it. it oop. Still a little bit more. So there we go. What you see here is this is our act. This blue right here is the actual ID of the serial chip. This yellow is what the system is labeling it as for right now. If we were to swap the two uh, USB plugs, it would actually swap the zero and the one with the two different controllers. But this, these IDs are unique. If both of your IDs are not unique, you'll only see one showing up here. And if that's the case. Instead of going by, instead of listing by ID, I'm going to go ahead and delete ID. I'm going to hit tab. And I can go by path instead. So P, there you go. And now I actually have the path of the particular USB itself, the actual socket it's connected to. And I can use this instead. But I don't have to. Okay. Um, oh, it looks like we're, we're done installing Clipper. So we're going to go ahead and flash we're going to go ahead and flash our uh, megas um, to do that we're going to go back to the install doc and I'm going to go ahead and hide that window we'll, we'll come back to that here in just a little bit So, it tells us what to do. I'm going to go ahead and go into the Clipper directory. And then we're going to do a, a make menu config. make this window there we go and in here uh, by default it's already at the 2560 um, you can leave all these things default just go over to save use your your keypad uh, your num <laughs> your uh, arrow keys go over to save hit save and just keep everything default and then we're gonna exit now we're gonna go ahead it's always good practice to delete the directory there's not there's one uh, there's not a directory here already. Uh, let's do a quick listing. These are the directories we have, but it will make a uh, out direct. Oh, there might already be one there. I always like to do a make clean, and it and it deletes any old files. And then we do a make. What it's going to do is it's going to uh, take all the relevant files for the firmware that we selected in the menu config, uh, package those all those all together, and then make us a nice firmware flash file to flash to the megas. All right, that's done. Now we can move on to installing. So we have to stop the Clipper service. So we issue that command. Then we're going to go ahead and flash, for most people, this TTYACM0 
will be one of your chips. As we looked before, all right. This is the other window we have, and we have AC, ACMO zero and one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flash the zero first. This takes zero time really to do this. Okay, it's verified. It's done. It is good. Now I'm gonna hit uh, the up arrow key, which allows you to cycle through commands. Okay. Up arrow key, delete, I'm going to add a 1, and now we're going to flash that other mega. Alright, those two megas are flashed. So, the next thing we have to do is configure Octoprint to use Clipper. And to do that, I need an octoprint window. And what we will do is we will just move over to my right monitor here. And we'll get a new window. Ah, I need to know my IP address. 192.168.1.242. This should take us to the Octoprint first time user. There it is. Go ahead, hit next. You're going to want to go ahead and put in uh, your credentials that you want to use here. Oh, go away. Keep access control enabled. Now access control is enabled. Hit next. Let's go ahead and test that. Yep. So it will do a connectivity check. We're going to go ahead and enable connectivity check. Hit next. Enable plugin blacklist processing. It is now enabled. Hit next. We are not going to import any profiles right now. Uh, I'm not going to use Cura 15 ever. Uh, make a default printer profile real quick. So this is a Voron 2. Voron 2. We got a rectangular bed. Origins lower left. It is heated. I, I have a 250. Go to, that, go to the axes. You can leave all this stuff uh, pretty much the same, except for I, I want my Z to be a little bit faster than uh, what it is stock. I'm trying to think here. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and hit next. And now we're going to finish. As of the release of this video, I believe that we need to update Octoprint. I'm going to go ahead and, in case you guys missed that, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't really talk about it. I went to the settings up here. I went to software update, clicked on check for update. It says that there is an update available for Octoprint. I'm going to go ahead and hit update now, proceed. Uh, this is a fairly quick one. I believe it takes about 45 seconds. Click, re click reload. We've now updated Octoprint. It should ask us uh, one quick question, I believe. And that is our usage tracking. Uh, you can turn it on or off. I'll go ahead and use it. Give them a little bit of the data. How I use Octoprint. Alright. It is now time to go over the installation so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my monitor for now uh, I'm gonna get me the octo print I mean clipper I don't know why I said octo print all right we'll put we'll put clipper over here octo print over here okay 
Go back to the installation. Where were we? All right. Following this, under, we need to add our uh, temp printer port. So go to settings. We go to serial, additional ports. We put in our port. We're going to go ahead and hit save here. And then we're going to go back into settings. Choose that new port we just added. As you'll notice, it auto-populated uh, both the cards that it sees. We'll add that. Uh, the default bot is 25,000. Uh, uh, yeah, we need to go to the behavior tab and select cancel any ongoing print jobs or stay connected to the printer. Click on save. Now we need to change our serial port to temp printer. Already there. Bot rate 2,500. The profile that I want to select. I don't think it can connect because we actually haven't done any firmware stuff yet. So, uh, we have now installed Clipper. Uh, we've got it uh, Octo Octoprint. We got that set up. And now it's time to configure Clipper. So, uh, follow on with the next video and uh, we'll be going over installing your Clipper configuration um, for the Voron 2 and doing some testing.